Your brother Hitchy here has just joined us last night. Let him stay over in my crib. Hey, man. <laughs> what, are we gonna do, what are we going to do today? So we're going to go out there, me, Joe, Michael, and anyone else, to witness, to be who we are supposed to be. Believers in Christ are supposed to preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, bring people back to God. And that's what we're supposed to do, to win souls. He who wins souls is wise. Amen. 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 Let's go. Amen. That's it. Like, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just here now with Michael. Here. Yo. <laughs> First time these guys have met. Yeah, let's get the trucks ready. And we're about to go out into the streets. Actually, no. We're about to get on that boat and have a pie. Check yeah. it out. Well, they've got wine. They've got a wedding going on. Yeah. She's got wine. Yeah, man. That's... I want to go and ask them actually, because I quite like to take Patronella on that boat. Like these, uh, there was some sign talking about boats, and I rang the number, but no one answered. So, but yeah, it's a beautiful day. Hopefully, we'll see some signs and wonders, and we'll cast out some demons, heal the sick, preach the gospel. Amen. 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 That's it, man. The kingdom of God. Amen. That's all that matters. Okay, we were just in the skate park just there to meet some some people. David's joined us. I've got family. <laughs> uh, David, just quickly. David, just can you explain what your ministry is? My ministry is telling people about the love of Jesus Christ. It's my cool. Yeah. What's, it, what's, it so, what's it called? It's called the key to love ministries.com. Yeah. 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 So David's going to leave us now, but um, it was great to have you on board. And, uh, it's been a pleasure. It's been absolutely massive, you know. Yeah. We've had was, great conversations. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now God's told us to go out into the whole of the all world and preach the good news. And the church and the brothers and sisters who know this need to be encouraged to get out. This has been so fruitful today. It's been I've met a couple of brothers I've never met before. And it's like mm. I've met them, all my, known them all my life. It's so important that we get out and share this wonderful news. Jesus is coming back soon and we need to be ready. Amen. Jesus loves you. God bless. Alright guys, just uh, yeah, just explain what just happened just now. Yeah, so what's the guy that you met? Yeah, so Magic. Um, Magic. Yeah, so this guy, um, I think we met him about three weeks ago, doing evangelism, myself and um, Joe. And um, yeah, um, today we just healed him and uh, he sat there with pain in his knee, so we offered to pray for him. He took a, a few attempts by all of us and um, yeah, he's walking and um, completely healed. We, we, we hope he said it's, there's a bit of pain, but it's not anywhere near as it was. And he's happy with it, and he's walking normally, so that's great. Yeah, it's amazing. Like I never met him before, but you guys told me about him, and he, you guys remember that he had that pain, like, isn't it? And then we started to pray, and at one point he said he felt the warmth, and we know that the spirit of God, the moment he enters, God's doing it anyway, isn't it? And then when each of us prayed, and then Joe came, and then every time there was a difference, and now he's he got up. In, in all hastiness, able to walk and I was seeing his friend and then there was time for him to have an opportunity to be told to download the Bible and things like that. So we pray that the seed that was planted will flourish and grow in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Praise amen. God. Hey Joe, your take. Come on, on yourself. Your take. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, pray for him. But let's just be real, like we go around and I just want to encourage anyone, like not everybody you're going to talk to is going to want to talk to you, but you just try and talk to them anyway. Uh, you might talk to three people that don't want to talk and then you'll stop some people. We talked to a lot of young people today. We shared the gospel with two young people, one guy probably about 17, the other 16 or so. Uh, in the skate park, shared the gospel with a lot of people, prayed for healing for one guy, for his sinuses. And, um, yeah, it was really great to have David along with us as well today. One woman, we led her in a, on the waterfront. I've met her before, a long time ago, but we did like the sinner's prayer with her. So we sort of, you know, asked her to sort of, we talked to her for a long time, it was like 10, 15 minutes. David actually had a coffee with her. And then when we met David, we, yeah, led her in a prayer to sort of accept Christ into our life. And it was amazing, man, like, yeah, that was really amazing. I want to go and just quickly talk to these guys. Okay, let's see live in action. Amen. Yeah, it's all recording. I've never 
just pray, we just pray for a guy yeah. Dominic and uh, yeah, yeah. we pray for him for his body to be healed. He had lots of issues all over the body, yeah. teeth, legs, backside, and we just pray for it all to be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. And he really received as well. Like he was yeah. not resisting. It was it's been really good today, man. Amen. A lot of positive conversations. Pray for a lot of healing for people yeah. and explain the gospel to lots of people. This has been one of the best week days. Huh? We done yeah, it. I think it's, it's, it's been very great. It's been fruitful great. to the point where we were able to have conversations with people and share the gospel more properly. You know? Amen. You know? Amen. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to encourage anyone? Um, yeah, if people are skeptical, just come out with us. We're out every Saturday and Sunday, yeah. more or less. Like, we didn't do it last weekend, but pretty much every week we do this. Yeah. We, we're doing what the Bible says we're preaching the word, healing the sick. Feeding the hungry, casting out demons. Amen. Yeah, and I um, just doing what the Bible commands us to do, man. That's it, man. Any encouragement, Michael, as well, you want to give? Um, what can I say? God is real and it's true. Yes. He always honor his word. Uh, don't be afraid, come out and watch God do what he does best. Exactly. Miracles. That's it. Obey the word of God and you will see wondrous things for the Lord. Praise God. Take oh, care. Christ. Okay, we've got Brother Michael over with us. Jahir's yeah. still here. <laughs> still here we just had a big meal. <laughs> it's like you've been here for long. We've had a big meal and uh, yeah, we're oh about God. to go and witness around just my area. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we're just discussing me. the Word of God. Just comment below and just let us know um, if uh, what do you guys believe in? Um, in is, do you believe that you all should be preaching the gospel, healing the sick, casting demons, raising the dead, or do you believe that God only calls certain people? Because the second one is definitely not true. Okay? Cool. Amen. <laughs> all right, Brother Michael. Hey, the kingdom is here, let's go out. Let's go. Heal the sick, preach the word. You have the same spirit as Jesus did, and he's in every one of us, if you believe. And Petronella, she'll just be praying for us as we go out. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Awesome. Jesus is listening to a teaching. Yeah, there's the Spanish Church of All the Nations Assembly of God in New Jersey. Yeah. So Jihir, just tell us, like, could you tell us like a little bit of your testimony, like how you became a Christian? Um, yeah, it's. I'll try to simplify it, but um, I basically was a very radical Muslim, like really strict. Like when I mean a Muslim, I mean I don't mean like someone that just believes in Islam and then just identifies as a Muslim but really how it happened was this I was brought up as a very strict Muslim and I was brought up as a very strict Muslim I um, always wanted to know God, follow God and I did that all throughout my life I went to Islamic school I was born in Wales and my family are there they're, they're Asian, they're, they're strict Muslim one day in 2013 I moved to London and I came to university and when I came to university my mind started to change and I started to think more liberally like you know my mind was so self-conscious and confined like do you know what I mean like so restrictive like, I couldn't even talk to any like girls I have to be careful this and that and then one day I met this girl and I found her attractive and obviously I didn't I was trying to be careful I'm thinking I do like her but how can I be in a relationship with her like if I were to be with her she needs to become a Muslim you know and, and I was going through that phase and then one day when I met her then we started talking about God, we connected, we became good friends and then I came in a relationship with her, obviously things happened that shouldn't have happened um, in terms of lifestyle and choices but then I wanted to marry her and be with her and I stayed with her first as a Muslim I stayed with her for two and a half years the, well, two and a half to three years as a Muslim that my parents had no idea bear in mind my parents had no idea that I was I was literally in with her at all they had no idea and then one day what happened was this that um, what happened is that I was actually walk it I was, what I was gonna say I met this guy in 2014 a manager I was in a call center and my friend uh, was uh, like a sort of like a Hindu background but he's agnostic very scientific and stuff like that and then uh, he one day I s he left the company I saw him outside and I saw him outside and then one day when I saw him outside I um, this is what happened he before he I saw him outside he left the company and when he left the company I was quite sad and I'm like Oh man, he was such a great manager, man. And when I saw him one day, he was a different person. He was a completely different person. So he was literally, he said to me, Jair! And I'm like, Ma, how are you doing? And he told me, I'm a Christian now. I told him, how's his life? And he said to me, I'm a Christian. I'm like, what? 
And I'm like, why are you Christian? What do you mean? He goes, no, I know, I know now it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I didn't understand. Because as a Muslim, you're not told what the true gospel is. Like, it's very rare that a Muslim actually knows what the true gospel of Jesus Christ is. And it's God's grace and God's love. And then, what happened was is, I said to him, look, come to my house or something. Let's meet up. And I started to meet up more. And then one day, he came to my house. And he tried to show me about Jesus Christ and his love. And I showed him the Quran. I literally opened all the scriptures. And I'm like, open it, all, all these things. And I tried to show him, like, Jesus is not God. Allah is God and all that. And then, he ended up actually winning me over. But he didn't know. He started telling me about the love of God, but I didn't want to look—I didn't want to look like I'm weak. So I was very arrogant and prideful. I knew everything. And one day uh, he left the house, and I was in my house, and I'm like, "What if he was right? Like I never heard this before. Like God loves us so much that He died for us, you know." And then um, I kept on thinking about it. It was crazy. And then one day he asked me to come to church. As a Muslim, I never went to church, man. I went to church and it was a fire of God church and when I went there I witnessed the supernatural power of God. I cannot even deny the power. I saw, I saw the supernatural and I, what I saw was this. I saw like the first thing, Rodney Howard Brown. Do you know Rodney Howard Brown, Joe? No. Yeah, Rodney Howard Brown is one of the famous preachers. He's a, he's a great evangelist brother and he's South African but he's in uh, I think Miami or something in America and he does and he was there. He was a big name there at the time and all I heard is hallelujah fire of God, Holy Spirit, and the people just drop, they just drop to the ground, and I'm like, what, and then they're covering them with towels, and they would get up testifying, the healed, and then the lady in front of me, a demon start coming out, she starts shaking like this, and all the chairs were falling, I'm like, what the heck, and I was like, is this witchcraft? I started thinking, wonder, I was scared, and then I went at the back, they started to worship God, and then when I went to worship God, I worshiped God, and I was like, at the back, and I, like, everybody's like, we worship you, Jesus, and I was like, Allah, I worship you. And it just didn't sound right. It didn't sound right. And then my heart, then I changed it and I said, Jesus. And then my heart started to change. Like started to beat faster, faster, faster. And then tears were almost coming down. And my friend were coming down. And I just could be like, I don't want to look like I'm weak. So I just started covering myself up. Then he invited me to church again another week. And I came again. And, and this time I heard the sermon. And I got so convicted what the pastor was saying. He was saying, now is the time. Anyone wants to give their life to Jesus, now. Now is the time. And I, I don't know what you said, that you got to come up. I, and I got really convicted and I didn't want to do it. I, I just got up. I'm like, I got to go, bro. I got And I just left the church. Um, and I went home, I think, with him. And then, now let me get to the point now. How is it I ended up giving my life to Jesus? In 2017, near the end of the year in 2017, I basically went to visit my parents because I used to visit my parents when I was in London now and again. And when I went to visit my parents, what happened was this. So they had no idea. They had no idea I had a girlfriend at the time. So and I had to cover it and I had to hide it. So I was like I was like living a life like both worlds where I had to hide. I had to be like I live with them like as if I don't have a girlfriend and then live over there in London that I do have a girlfriend. And it was like a hypocrisy. It's like it was weird. Then one day my phone rang and my girlfriend was calling on my phone. So when the, my girlfriend called, they, my mum saw the phone and I quickly picked her up. I ran upstairs and I spoke to her on the phone. I'm like, please, can you? I was talking to her. I said, please, can you act like a guy, please? Just like, act like a guy. And then um, and I was talking to her normally. And then I said to her, she's like, what? And then we kept on talking. Then at the end, I said, I love you. I said, I love you. And then my mum heard it. And all this time, my mum was underneath the door, eavesdropping in the conversation. She was hearing everything. Yeah. And then she smashed open the door. <laughs> Tell him, Joe. And, like, and, she, and she like, I don't know how, but it was so much emotion. Do, do you have a girlfriend? Like that, you know? Like, who is, who is, who are you talking to? And I'm like, mom, what do you mean? I said, it's not a, like, it's not a girl. It's just a guy, man. It's just my friend. She goes, no, 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 Jai, please tell us. We're not going to do anything bad to you, okay? I said, okay, it's just a girl who's a friend I'm studying with, doing a project at university. Obviously, that was a lie. Um, then I sat down. My mom was in one opposite side. I was here. And then my mum, now I never heard the voice of God in any shape, what form. Like, either it's in the mind, either audible, I never heard anything as a Muslim, never. And then I, I heard something and my mum was interrogating me and I heard, tell the truth. Like over my ear and I didn't sound like, I'm like, but that's a good thing. I'm like, I gotta tell the truth and something came to me and I know that's God. And I went to tell the truth, I said, mum, give her a chance. 
you know, please don't judge and just let me be and see and how it is. She called my dad. My dad was a very violent and temperate, short-tempered man at the time. So he would, um, he was at work and she called him immediately. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And guess what? He literally put his job down, ready to come home. He has a girlfriend, a girl, and he immediately came home. And the hell, hell started breaking. I had to close the door quickly. He start verbally or physically try to abuse my mum. And so it's all your fault. Your son is like all this. They called the imam to do exorcism on me. Jesus. Yeah, man. They thought that something was wrong with me that much just because I had a girlfriend who was white, who was old, who was a different color skin, a different religion culture. Oh. It's not like you got a demon, <laughs> you know. So it has to be, it has to be Muslim and Asian, you know. And um, when that happened. They did exorcism and they start, the guys start tapping my body and my bones and everything and then they felt like to check if I got gins and they found nothing. They're like your boyfriend, your, your, your son is okay, your boy is okay. And then, then literally what happened was he tried to convince me. The Imam tried to convince me of my, tried to convince me not to leave my parents. Like your parents are everything to you, you know. Then this is the supernatural happen. This is where now next day my mum, my sister called me and my sister said to me, Jared, come downstairs right now. Dad is calling you. And my dad was arms were crossed. And I'll show you, my dad was like this. And he said, You got two choices. You leave the girl, you leave university, you leave your job, you leave everything, you come back to us and never go there. Second choice, you leave us. You're dead to us, you're no longer a son, you're an orphan. We cut you from our blood family tie and he said that if we die no one's gonna tell you okay you gotta make a decision in two to three hours or I'm gonna force you at the house see he was doing like that I'm gonna force you at the house and then when that was happening when that was happening I'm like what am I gonna do I said dad please please and he's like no he's like no you gotta make a decision right now immediately you gotta make a decision and then what happened was he then I had to go quickly so what it was is I basically made the decision. I called my Muslim friends. Look, I had really good Muslim friends, man. But when I called the Muslim friends, do you know what happened? I spoke to them. None of them were willing to help me. None of them were saying to Jar. Do you know what they said? Oh, you Jar, you're old enough now. You know, you're a grown man. Like you got problems. We also got old. And I'm like, what? They don't even. So and guess who I had to call? My Christian friend that took me to church. That's the person that I had to call. And when I called him. Then he started to tell me about Jesus Christ and when he started telling me about Jesus Christ This is what happened. I'm like and he's saying Jesus loves you and I'll pray for you and help you and all that sort of stuff And then right at the end he, he said to, he, he said something about Jesus being the son of God Why is the truth and I yelled I put the phone on mute and I said Jesus is not the son of God I yelled and then I felt guilty and then I unmute the phone and then he spoke to me what changed my life So he said to me Jahir Look, do you really want to know God? And I said, I really want to know God, man. I've been seeking God. Like, I want to know who he is. And then, I, and then he said, look, you go down in your bedroom. You ask him yourself and he will reveal himself to you. But it will cost you nothing just to ask God. It will cost you nothing just to ask him. And I said, you're right, man, actually. And I went down to my bedroom. I would n literally went down to my knees and I said, Allah, I don't believe in it anymore. But Jesus, I know if you are the way, the truth and the life, show me right now in a dream. Show me that God, if you are real, Jesus, if you are my savior and my Lord, I'll believe in you. Otherwise, forget it. And then I, I said, I'm going to, then I was demanding God. I was challenging God. And I said, God, I'm going to go to the bed right now. I'm saying right now, look, if you show me, then I'll believe in you. Then I went to bed and I was in a spiritual and a physical dream. So I was in the Muslim country, Muslims were chasing me, they were getting axe and bats and everything beat me and I was running in my dream over trash cans and everything and I got beaten up so bad I got paralyzed and I felt the paralysis in my own bed, I felt the paralysis and when I felt the paralysis in my bed I was shaking and then I saw a light in the sky, I didn't know exactly it was Jesus but I knew it was coming and then it was like a long white raiment of grove and brazery here, light shining from his face and it hit me and I got healed. And he said to me the first words, your family will forsake you, but I never will. I said, I am Jesus Christ, your father, you are my son. I shed my blood for everyone. Everybody knows about me, but they don't know who I am. Believe in me and I'll be with you forever. That's how much I love you, Jai. And then you came to London. And then... and then I woke up and I lost my sight. So I became blind. So I was wearing glasses for more than 15 years uh, and then I lost my sight um, and then I woke up and I couldn't see 
and it was I was trying to check what's going on is it me or is it that then I checked I rubbed my eyes like throughout the moments and day my room every day I was screaming and I thought I can't see anymore and then I lay down on my bed I felt like I wanted to kill myself because that was my biggest fear and then the light came somehow something came in my room and I got healed by the power of God okay and my eyes I don't need glasses anymore it's like 20-20 vision by the grace of God so now and then after that, now more supernatural. On that day, it was, everything was on a Sunday. I was going to London, John G. Lake Ministries house. And um, Matt took me. Now, when I was going to Golders Green, my phone battery was 0%. I went to the shop to charge my phone. And when I went to go to charge my phone, it charged up to one or two or few percent. And then it went back down again. And I was saying to God, oh. The battery's gone again, like so. I said. Then I spoke to God. As a Muslim, you don't even talk to you don't even talk to God, like, um, like, oh God, if you wanna, like, you just do these recitations. But when I was there, I was like, God, if this is really you, do something. And then literally, my phone came back to life with my Christian friends call. It just literally didn't even go through any steps. It just called with him, and then he called. He got the Uber, and I got into the Uber. Then my battery died. And I got to the house church and they prayed for me, they started talking to me and then there was a m massive battle in the spiritual in my head. They said, hey, do you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I was like, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I was scared of hell. I was so scared of hell that I didn't want to leave Islam, that I should go to Jesus. Then something broke. Jesus Christ broke the yoke, man. And I said, I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. I believe you are God. I forgive me for all my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. And you know, and you have saved me. And then after that, now we're coming to the end, but this is amazing. I want to encourage you guys. Now then, I was I had like rash and I was tired and I was like ill like that when I when I was coming to the house. And then the next week I came, they could have recognized I was so different, completely healed and restored. And then there was one time, I think a week or two later, I came to the house. People were speaking in tongues. I got so scared. Everybody's like, Rokromo siendre masahan. And I'm like, I got scared. I'm like, what the heck is this? And then I was, and they like, do you, do you speak in tongues? And I'm like, no, I don't know, I don't. And then I got a bit um, scared. And then I became comfortable. And this, I want to encourage you guys, the power of God, the Spirit of God does want you to pray in, pray in tongues. It's praying the will of God, it's the power of God. Amen. And then this is what happened. They prayed, they said, fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, speak right now. They were all speaking in tongues around me. It was igniting me. The demon was leaving me. My leg was shaking. And the Spirit of God came like rivers of living water. And I, just by faith, opened my mouth. And then he just took over. And I couldn't stop. They had to stop me. Like this is kept on going. Was this 2017? 16? Yeah, 2017. Yeah. Wow. Around that. And since then, you've been out preaching the word. Healing yeah. Sick. Since then, um, yeah. In within a few months, yeah, God has been helping me, and then I started to preach the gospel, heal the sick. And one of the one of the first few healings was actually a blind eye, in Jesus' name. So wow. God is good, man. Like, he's been doing amazing, man. So I want to encourage you. You're a Mark 16 believer. All believers have authority. Not one person is special. You're all peculiar people. Amen. Amen. Preach. Stay blessed, man. Yeah. Just keep going. We're going to preach the word. Heal the sick. Try and find a few guys. A couple of hours. Do you manage to pray for that guy? Yeah, yeah I pray for some guy. Um, some guy up there, and uh, he received the Holy Ghost Friday. Right so, yeah. yeah, yeah. He just received him. He was telling me about his mom. Um, it's that simple guys, guys, yeah. it's that simple, oh, I think so. I can't even film myself, it's that simple guys, just go out and preach the word, it's that simple, it's not that hard. We do it every time we come out, we see things happen. Yeah we were on Yarmouth Road and there was a guy coming past with this, carrying this big load and we prayed for him, had a very good conversation with him, we all prayed for him, Michael started praying for him, Jesus started praying for him and uh, yeah it was, it was good, we prayed for healing, we prayed for him for a break addiction of cigarettes and uh, that was positive but we're going to go to the pub now the red line we thought we'd maybe just get a soft drink there and just try and talk to some people witness to some people in there so hopefully it'll go good